This winter marks 25 years of the UMD women's hockey program. Over the past few months, our Alexis Beckett sat down with some of the best of Bulldogs past and present. It's a special report looking back at a special team. Alexis, a lot of people helped make this program what it is. Absolutely, Dan and Laura. Over the past quarter century, the UMD program has established themselves as a women's college hockey dynasty. And the Bulldogs have been able to accomplish things that take other programs sometimes multiple decades to accomplish. And they did it in just 25 years. But it all had to start somewhere. And in this first part of reflecting on the program, we take a look at its inception. To the backhand, the shot she scores! In September of 1997, the University of Minnesota Duluth Chancellor Catherine A. Martin and Athletic Director Bob Corrin announced that Division I women's hockey would be added to UMD in 1999. One second into period number two. I thought it was fantastic. I thought that was fantastic they're adding women's hockey, without a question, uh, especially at this level. A new program in the state of hockey. They had a club hockey team but then to elevate it to a national division one sport was phenomenal. You know, at this point, it was just the men's hockey team, so to have a women's hockey team made perfect sense. The first step in building the program was finding the right head coach, and where better to start than with a few pioneers in women's hockey. Because I was coaching at the Olympics, coaching Team Canada, and of course, Team USA was our biggest rival, and somebody woke me up in the middle of the night to leave the athlete's village uh, dorm rooms to go take a call on a payphone. <laughs> and it was former Chancellor Catherine Martin. And she explained to me who she was and that they were gonna start women's hockey. And although there of course would be a process and everyone would apply, she just said, I'm actually calling to see if you're interested in applying for the position. At the time, Shannon Miller was the head coach of Team Canada in the 98 Winter Olympics in Japan, the first Olympics to feature women's hockey. Now's the time to hammer it to them. Before Miller led Team Canada to the gold medal game that year as the only female head coach in the games, she had an already impressive coaching resume, including three gold medals in the IIHF Women's World Championships. But the Canada native was unsure if it was the right time to move to the U.S., so she declined the position at UMD not once, but twice. Then after one last-ditch effort by Catherine Martin in 1998, Miller decided to start a new chapter in Duluth, becoming the program's first head coach. Now step two, filling her bench. Shannon had called and, you know, left a couple messages, and I was, it's, again, after the Olympics that heated USA Canada rivalry which still exists in in the women's hockey game and I was like Shannon Miller I'm like eh, no and then another call didn't respond another call and I'm like I, I'm not working for Canadian you know, I'm not working for the Canadian Olympia you know. Duluth native Shauna Davidson was among those interviewed for the UMD head coach position and another pioneer in the sport Davidson was the first woman to play intercollegiate hockey from Duluth. After graduating from Duluth East High School, Davidson spent four years at the University of New Hampshire and went on to play in the inaugural IIHF World Championships in 1990 for Team USA. And I said, well, I don't have to look any further than Shonda Davidson in Duluth to know that you, I'd like you to be my first hire. And then Stacy Wilson was the captain of Team Canada, and she was looking to coach. So Stacy um, and I had a good relationship. Stacy knew Shauna from competing against her, and the rest is history. Those were my first two assistants, and they were awesome. Then it was time for step three, deciding who they wanted the Bulldogs to be. And what Miller knew for sure is that she wanted to build an international powerhouse. If I want to bring the world to Duluth and start not just build a women's college, successful women's college hockey team, but lift women's hockey up globally. Tapping into to those international connections, Stacy's Canadian connections, um, my connections within Minnesota, you know, the state of hockey, and and you know, tapping into trying to get the local kids, the Minnesota kids. Not only did the coaches have to sell a brand new program to players and their families, but sell a new way of life for international players who oftentimes didn't speak English. For some, like Patricia sauter Elsmore from Switzerland, it was the unknown that attracted her. Well, I think when you grow up in a different country, you know, you, you have the NHL, there's, you know, like, 
it's it's something everyone dreams about when they are playing a sport of you know playing at the highest level and at that point really for us you know i i already played in a national team and you know coming over here would be you know huge because we used to practice three times a week you know that was like a lot you know and then we had a, maybe a game or two and you know, knowing that we'd be able to practice every day and playing games and, you know, it just was a new challenge and something that, you know, really nobody knew how, you know, what that would do for your ability to get better. And are we willing to pay the price for greatness? Are you? The roster for that inaugural season included 12 players from Minnesota and unlike any other team in the country at the time, 10 international players. Takes the shot goal. Just like that. Coming up in part two. Oh, no, I think that first season was then how do you how do you put it all together and and make it work? To get Olympic coaches, to get Olympic players on your roster, I knew right away that this was going to be, you know, they were going to with time, you know, be successful with, you know, matching the competition in the league without a doubt, without a question. He's going back to the national. Part two will air next Tuesday as we take a look at some of the most impressive first five years any team in any sport has ever had.